people on TikTok are using hemorrhoid creams as under eye creams, saying that it helps their under eye bags. And I think that this started because of Kim Kardashian and her makeup artist, Makeup by Mario, but what the heck is going on? Hi, hemorrhoids, what are we talking about? What is happening here? And how did people start to think that this was a good idea? As you can see, people on TikTok have started to do this. And apparently this has been around for a little while. There are some people on the internet who have been testing this and saying that this hemorrhoid cream helps with their under eye bags specifically with under eye bags and under eye color. But what exactly is in hemorrhoid creams that actually can help with bleeding or vasoconstriction? And is this a good idea to be putting under people's eyes? Before we speak about the under eyes, what are hemorrhoids? If you haven't been pregnant or constipated or dealt with these, then um, welcome to adulthood. Hemorrhoids are a very, very common thing. They're usually not life-threatening unless things get infected, but they're basically these swollen veins in, um, am I allowed to say on the internet? Am I, ooh, mm, rectal, mm. Demonetization. How much can we talk about medicine without getting demonetized? In the boudet area, if you strain, if you are regularly constipated, or for those who have been pregnant or given birth, it's very common to have hemorrhoids, and it happens to a lot of adults. And there are certain creams that can actually be applied externally to specific areas that can actually help stop that bleeding. And if you have ever just gone in for a little wipe and come back with something bright red where it shouldn't be, that is your cue to go to the doctor. Hello! It might be something as simple as hemorrhoids but it's good to find out. And fun fact for public health and safety, if it's black and tarry, definitely go to the doctor because you don't want internal bleeding. Yay, internal bleeding. <laughs> but hemorrhoid creams can be applied to this area to actually vasoconstrict, to constrict those blood vessels so that they don't bleed as much. And in addition, they can help with the itching and kind of the irritation that happens. Basically, this area can get very itchy. It's called puritis ani, or basically this um, itching. And don't itch it, you don't wanna make it worse, but there are certain things put in some of these creams to help with that itching. Now, why did some people decide to put this underneath their eyes? Is this Kim Kardashian's fault? Well, Kim Kardashian's makeup artist is Makeup by Mario, and apparently he's been quoted as saying, I use a little bit of Preparation H, or I use a little bit of hemorrhoid cream under the eye area to help with puffiness and discoloration. Now, is this true? And is this a good idea? Well, let's turn and learn these ingredients. Let's look at the active ones and the inactive ones, because this is kind of an interesting deduction. You know, when it comes to under eye issues, there are many different reasons that people don't like their under eye area. It could be wrinkles, which is totally different. It could be puffiness, which could be fluid retention or these fat pads underneath the eyes, or it could be, you know, this darkness, this discoloration. Now, what hemorrhoid cream actually does in that under area, well, it's a vasoconstrictor. So if it's a vasoconstrictor and if it constricts those veins, is that going to help, you know, with the hemorrhoids as well as with the under eye bags or with the color that might be, you know, from under eye vasculature that's in this area? It's a very interesting thought process, but remember that a lot of these medications work differently depending on where you apply them on or in the body. And a lot of the ingredients in here actually vary from package to package, and some of these should not be used by the eyes. This one happens to be the maximum strength pain relief one, and this one does not contain steroids which yes, some of the other ones do. So let's talk about that. When we actually look at the ingredients, we have glycerin that acts as a protectant. You know it from your skincare. We have phenylephrine HCL, which is a vasoconstrictor. This is what's actually doing the work in the hemorrhoid cream. And it's actually, it's usually used intravenously. Um, it can help with people who have really low blood pressure to bring that blood pressure back up, fun fact. We've also got promoxine HCL for that puritis, that itching that can really happen in that area, as well as white petrolatum, which yes, is basically our Vaseline, our limo jelly, that white petrolatum or petroleum. And that acts as a protectant because especially in that area, you want to make sure that this thing, which is a mucous membrane, is protected. Now there are other inactive ingredients. Those are things such as aloe extract. We have anhydrous citric acid, a very small amount, and that looks like it is for pH control. We do have things like mineral oil. It looks like we have some vitamin E, basically a bunch of things that help to bind this together um, and to help it apply nicely, you know, to that area of the skin. So the question then becomes, well, would this actually
actually work in the under eye area? And is this safe to use? And would those ingredients help? Now here's something interesting that's worth discussing and it's called off-label use. For example, tretinoin we know and love as our retin-A or our retinoids and that retin-A is really used for the treatment of acne. But off-label it is prescribed for wrinkles or for scars. Now it is not medically proven or FDA approved to treat wrinkles, but a lot of doctors and derms have found that it does and so they use it off-label uh, to do something else. Now something like Preparation H, which is an OTC, you know, an over-the-counter drug that has had to go through testing, is approved for the anal area for those hemorrhoids and some of that itching. However, it is not approved for the eye area. The question is, is this a good idea to do? Now when it comes to phenylephrine, I actually don't know how well it would work on the skin or in the under eye areas. When you actually think of what's happening in the rectal and anal area, this is a mucous membrane. It's more similar to the inside of your mouth, the inside of your gums, than it is to the outside of your skin. I mean, just kind of think about that, right? And just because this helps with a protruding vein, which is this hemorrhoid, doesn't mean that it's going to help with the puffiness from under eye bags. And when you think even further, what causes an under eye bag? If it's just fluid retention, doing something like pressure can help. If it's an actual fat pad, one of the fat pads in the eye areas that's actually herniating through that septum that actually holds our eye up and together, nothing is going to help that except for surgery, right? And if it is this kind of purpleness under the eyes, is it hyperpigmentation that something like vitamin C would help? Or is it actually this pooled up blood, which something like caffeine would arguably be a little bit better rather than something like this? So we don't know if it works in this under eye area. There haven't been studies on that. Some people seem to use it, but there are also some people who tested it and said nothing happens. Now here's the question. Is this actually dangerous? Could this cause problems? When it comes to phenylephrine, it is usually used intravenously. It's not often used topically, and it is actually actually used in the eyes. But when it's used in the eyes, it can actually cause blurred vision. It can impair your reaction time. Uh, you should not be driving with it, right? And it's used to, you know, to dilate these pupils. And I know that a lot of people are saying, well, I don't apply this directly into my eyes, but it does spread. And I do think that that would be of concern. And again, this is not medical advice. This is me trying to understand where this came from, why it's spreading virally on the internet and break down whether or not it's a good idea. And at this point, I would say, literally take this to a dermatologist and ask them. They would have a much better understanding. Maybe there are other uses for some of these topical vasoconstrictors in the, you know, eye area that I'm not aware of. But knowing the anatomy of this area being so different from the eyes, I would be scared. However, we are only talking about the one that I have in my hand. There is actually another form of preparation H, or there are many other forms of hemorrhoid creams, some that actually have steroids. Some forms of preparation H actually have hydrocortisone. And you may know hydrocortisone cream as, yes, the steroid cream. And while steroid creams can be very helpful for people who have other skin conditions, applying steroids in the eye area are not a good idea, especially if it's not prescribed or recommended by your doctor dermatologist. We know that the under eye area still has pores, just like the rest of the face. However, the under eye area is thinner than other areas on the body. How these steroids work topically is by slowing down how much your skin turns itself over. And this really helps with itching and inflammation. It basically stops the body from creating these proteins and helps with, you know, people who have things like bug bites or itches or issues with things like eczema and psoriasis. But there are different types of steroids and some of them can actually cause irritation and itching and can actually cause issues with the skin in the under eye area because it is more delicate. There are steroids like triamcinolone that you would never want to use unless it is recommended by a dermatologist. Again, these things, these steroids are prescription only for a reason. And some of the corticosteroids that are in some of these over-the-counter products can be dangerous if they're used incorrectly. Now, speaking to retinoids, you know, there are some off-label uses, but those off-label uses are still prescribed by and recommended by dermatologists and doctors and people who understand the mechanism of action or basically how these drugs work. And it's very dangerous to go applying things where they don't belong. Think about Pepto-Bismol. If you have an upset stomach, constipation, diarrhea, drinking some Pepto-Bismol can be great. But what would happen if you injected Pepto-Bismol right into your veins? Um, <laughs> Yeah, if you'd inject too much, like you would die very quickly. That would not be good. You'd be very, very, very sick because it's not meant to be used intravenously, right? And just because something like this is used for vasoconstriction in those mucous membranes or because it is injected intravenously doesn't mean that it's safe for the eye area. Now, I don't think this is going to send someone to the ER, even if you use the version that has the steroids in it. I don't think it's going to, you know, send you into having a medical emergency unless you are allergic to any of the ingredients. But at this point, it's not something that I would 
would do. And based on my understanding of it, having not tried it personally, it doesn't look like it's that effective. If you've got hemorrhoid cream and you are itching, no pun intended, to put it under your eyes, I would say please call a doctor. Even just get on like a teledoc thing like K-Health or Forward or something. Like speak to a doctor first before doing it. And you know, that Peter Thomas Roth one, that's a really good one and it looks like it works five times better. And guess what? It doesn't have the steroids and it doesn't have any of these, you know, anti-itch ingredients or any of these other vasoconstrictors that this one does as well. And if you're looking for a really good vasoconstrictor, something like caffeine is great. Caffeine does not wake up your eyes the way Kylie Skin tries to tell us, but it constricts those blood vessels. And if you find a really good cream, whether it's a face cream or an eye cream, you could use that in this area. I actually tested the Ordinary's Caffeine Eye Cream uh, if you wanted to see how that actually worked out on my face. And we actually spoke to a plastic surgeon about, you know, puffiness in the under eye areas. So I would highly recommend that you watch that video next uh, before taking this from downstairs to upstairs before taking this uh, out of the drawer or off of the shelf. I mean, you just, you never thought that this is what you would find on TikTok. So with that said, ask a doctor before applying hemorrhoid cream to your eye area. Uh, watch this video on eye creams instead and always remember to be beautiful both inside and out. Literally inside and out, no pun intended. <laughs> This is so bad. I love you beautiful butterflies and I can't wait to see you in this next video. Love you guys, bye.